The Halo TV series is complete trash. The thing is, I quite enjoy trash television, mainly because it's so fun to take the piss out of. I also enjoy going head to head with people who try and defend said trash, especially if they try and come at it from some kind of position of pretentious superiority. They're like, you can't do that. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> But there is one group of people that that always puts me head to head against, and that is none other than... Are you serious? Journalists, yes. In this case, it's particularly games journalists. In this case, not just hated for their gaming opinions, but also for their television ones as well. Look, it, it takes talent to be wrong that often, but these people actually manage it. It's not surprising, though, that this happened about Halo, which is obviously a gaming IP, especially when it also involves 343, the owners of the IP themselves. This is a debrief on the official Halo Waypoint website, so, um, this ought to be fun. I have to say, when you're doing a recap of your new Halo show, which the fans despise, kind of takes on balls to come out and say it. Although trying to defend one moment is not only bizarre, but uh, at the end of the day, I kind of think you're doing it for a different reason. The moment that I'm talking about is when the Bastard Chief himself took off his helmet. It's a nice distraction about the rest of the show, which is just purely ass on its own. And yet, what we've got here is the official 343 coming out and trying to defend one moment to shift the conversation to just about that helmet. Why? Because they think they can defend that. They think that is their strong point. And as long as everyone is talking about that, something that they think they can make the fans look unreasonable about, well then everyone's just going to ignore just how awful the rest of the show is. And yet that is what this article tries to claim. If you have a problem with the TV series, you're just not a Halo fan. Honestly, I don't think this one's gonna work out well for them. Is this simple idea of when they face an opposition, which is a strong opposition, it's just like, no, you shall not pass this wall. Sort of, in this case, we just want the cannon. They try and attack a small part of it to get some kind of compromise, to get a maybe out of them. Okay, so you're against all of this law, but, but, at, at some point, for a tiny little part of it, he did actually take his helmet off. I mean, those who have read Fall of Reach and media centered around Master Chief, oh, he was taking his helmet off all the time. And if you're actually a real gamer, if you took on the campaign on Legendary, then you will have clearly seen a nanosecond glimpse of his eyes. And obviously, once you've admitted that, oh, he's taking his helmet off a bit, you've seen a nanosecond glimpse of his eyes, we've crowbarred open a little possibility. And that just means he can take his helmet off whenever he wants, no matter what the story says. Now we've got a maybe out of you. We're going to turn it into an entire world. It's a very common strategy. But what's next isn't. Because this comes from the PC Gamer article themselves, where they say, I enjoyed the suggestion that if you're surprised to see Master Chief's face, then it's just because you're not a real Halo fan. Yes, there's no true Scotsman in this village. You've not read all the books, sorry. And obviously, if you've not read all of the books, you can't be a Halo fan. That just makes common sense for some reason that they're not going to explain. They're just going to state as a fact. I don't know if you can see the double standard here, that just because there's a nanosecond glimpse of his eyes, that means we can take his entire helmet off and do whatever he wants because, you know, we've got a little tiny maybe out of you. But at the same time, if you don't do everything, every little single thing that they demand of you, then obviously you're not even a Halo fan. So why don't you, why are you even talking about this? And why don't you just shut up? But don't worry because this PC gamer journalist is obviously the master arbiter of who is and who isn't a Halo fan. This guy knows everything about Halo. He is the master chief of Halo lore and he can single-handedly determine whether you have a right to talk about a topic. Yes, that's why he enjoys other people. You're actually not a Halo fan, not like me. I'm vastly superior to you. That's how we get Jody McGregor, someone who I think we can all agree uh, probably would look better if he had the helmet on himself. Yes, Jody here used to be a former music journalist. So obviously a music journalist is now turned into a games journalist. Both of these are extremely esteemed professions. Yes, because the way I see it, you've got journalists and dung beetles. Both spend their lives pushing total crap, so what's the difference? And our good Jody here, he used to write for other gaming magazines like Rock, Paper, Shotgun, but also Playboy, yes. He wrote for Playboy. One of the only magazines that no one ever bought for the articles, so I think anyone could have written for that. I'm not sure I'd want it on my CV. Although if you're posing for it, I'm not sure you sold many copies either. But don't worry about that, because his checks with a bunny logo on them 
It made for fun conversations in the bank. And if that's not a qualification to determine who's a Halo fan and who isn't, then I'm not sure what is. But what he's actually talking about is this article from 343 themselves over on the Halo Waypoint website. And I have to say, I think this is what makes me uh, dubious about its intentions, because above what you have is a recap about everything that went on in the episode. And they say it's out every Monday. But let's be honest, I mean, my reviews are not only more entertaining and more accurate, but they're also out every Friday, so why would you ever read this when you can go and check out mine? The link to the playlist down in the description below. That's probably the most smoothest advertisement for my own material I've ever done. And the reason I like this is because it uses various standard tactics that you see everywhere else. But I don't think they even realise that they're arguing from my position. But the thing is, you can't argue from my position, you can't use my principles when they're not yours. And that is their fundamental problem. You see, what he's trying to do here is argue that actually, no, it's all within law. He's trying to crowbar open that possibility and then turn an entire world out of it. It's standard. It's their playbook. It's like, oh, they want the law. We'll give them the law. We'll try and explain that, yeah, well, it happened for a second here, and that means we can do it for all of it, and that's fine. But the issue is, they're not actually making Halo. How on earth do you expect that you can use expanded universe or game law when that's not what your TV series is based upon. It really doesn't make sense, does it? You've already come out and said that you're making a different universe. So you've already thrown out all of the original law. That's for an entirely different universe. So you can't use that law to justify your new creation because your new creation has no law. It has no base. It has no foundation, which is generally why it's crumbling apart and has turned into a complete crap. What they're doing here is almost trying to justify Star Wars by referring to Doctor Who. The two things have nothing to do with each other. They took the law and they yeeted it out of a window when it got run over by a car and then set on fire. But that also means that they can't use it to justify things in their TV shows, no matter how minor or more much of a side story it is when it becomes convenient for them. You don't get to pick and choose the law. Law is a coherent story. It starts at A and goes to B, and you either follow all of it, or it's not the law. But that doesn't stop them here. Because you see, towards the end of the first episode, the Master Chief does something rather momentous, or sacrilegious, depending on where you stand on the matter. This was an interesting creative decision to grapple with. It wasn't, it was cheap, lazy, and something that someone of no talent would decide. But let's face it, that's basically like the rest of the show. For fans of our expanded universe who have read The Fall of Reach, taking the helmet off is something they're actually quite used to. But all of that is completely irrelevant, because this has nothing to do with The Fall of Reach or the expanded universe. You destroyed that, you nuked the expanded universe from orbit and set up your own universe. So this is irrelevant. And here we get to one of the biggest lies of gaming, generally made by people who aren't gamers or just don't understand how humanity works. He says, but the games themselves have predominantly been a space for player projection, where you step into the boots of humanity's greatest hero, and I would argue that this is literally never the case with gaming. I find very few games where you actually, yourself, are the main character. No, it's you stepping into somebody else's shoes. You're not you anymore. You're them. You cease to exist. This is why it's called escapism. You escape from you into somebody else. You get to experience somebody else's life as somebody else, live as somebody else, role play as somebody else in an entirely different world. Who you are is basically irrelevant at this point. But these people can't actually see that. They think that when you play a game, you suddenly take over somebody else, and it's you in that suit doing your things. Mm, no. I actually th can't think of a worse idea where Dave down the street steps into a game as Dave. That would be one of the worst heroes in the world. It's like, yeah, do, do you see this story about Dave, the hero, with a beer gut who's lazy and hasn't stepped out of his house for the last two weeks? Overall, he's a bit disgusting and suffering with various different problems. That's our hero, everybody. I hope you enjoy it. Even in that case, even Dave doesn't want to be himself. No, he wants to be Batman kicking ass. He doesn't want to put himself inside Batman. And it's not like they don't know that because they even say the needle has been moved at various points. Chief has never been a silent protagonist. He is a fully realized character who brings a great deal of sorrow and pathos along with his unbreakable will and strength. But as he is the vessel for your adventure, quite naturally, there's people who are understandably against the idea of seeing his face at all. Uh, no. Deus Ex is exactly the same as Halo. You go in, you take over a person, and uh, we still see that guy's face. What people are arguing against isn't the idea of seeing someone's face. They have no problem seeing the face of someone actually playing in a game. 
The thing is here, it doesn't actually make sense, and also they want you to stick to canon. And just because you tried to carve out a maybe from some canon which actually has nothing to do with your universe doesn't really strengthen your argument, does it? But it would be just as unusual if you made a Deus Ex series and put him in a helmet for the entire series, as it is to make a Master Chief series and take him out of it, especially when someone's got a gun pointed to his face. That sense of ownership or shared authorship of the character really derives from the interactive framework that defines the video games as a medium. I don't know if you can see the marks of a pretentious div coming in here, because you've got to understand however you spin it so that the Master Chief isn't you in the game or anywhere else. What people could do is relate to him through his experiences and emotions as normal human beings can that aren't sociopaths. And sociopath is absolutely where I put the point of, uh, the people that go, well, you had to see his face because otherwise you wouldn't know his emotions or know that he was human. I mean, seriously, if you can't tell it's a human inside an armor suit and you actually can't even understand what someone inside that suit could be going as without seeing their eyeballs, you're absolutely a sociopath. Because everyone else can understand that a human can also wear clothes. But we're about to dial the pretentiousness up to 10. Revealing the chief's face was one of those things. A moment that is not a plot point or even explicitly a reveal of what he looks like. I mean, that's literally all it was. You just showed his face and that was it. But a means to tell his story, it had to be a moment that was earned and meaningful. This is also part of why it happened in the first episode. It's not a twist. It's a mission statement. And they actually kind of destroyed their own argument in the next sentence to each other, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it had to be earned and meaningful, and yet was just given away in the first episode. It's exclusivity that provides something its value. So by showing his face in episode one, you gave it absolutely none. So any point you actually try and make here is undermined by the way you told it. Just remember, this is a girl who's pointing a gun at his face, and he decides to take the protection of his face off. Let's face it, the only thing that should have happened in that situation is he should have gone full Mr. Smith and just taken the gun off it. That's the only sane response in that situation. But instead, he decides to take his helmet off to the person who literally wants to shoot him in the face. And let's face it, he should have got blown away. That should have been the end of the series. But what now? Is he going to get blown instead? When given the order to execute Quan, and let's face it, if he'd actually done so, it would have easily added six points onto the score. The Master Chief finds that he is unable to do so, because they wrote the script that way. Not because she didn't deserve it, but instead, 343 thinks that I need to be lectured upon things such as morality and loyalty. Uh, something which I don't think has ever been a concern in Hollywood at all. But what gets me is the entire just tone of the article. It's just, no, we know what we're doing, we know better than you, we read it all, and if you think anything different than us, you're wrong. Hypocrisy is used a lot when it comes to beliefs, but it also applies to this. You can't pick and choose from law. Law is a holistic vision. It's something that fits together, and if you start removing things, it's like a Jenga tower. It's just all going to fall down when you've removed some of the foundational pieces of it. It's something that generally you can't touch much of. It's very, very fragile. But what you don't get to do if someone's saying, no, we need to support this tower, is knock it over and then pick up the pieces and go, well, this proves you're wrong and this proves you're wrong because you don't care about the tower. You already destroyed it. And the result is this. Some arrogant, pretentious little know-it-all coming in and trying to basically insult everyone and coming up with an argument that he knows actually doesn't carry any water, but he also doesn't care. I'm beginning to think that these shows don't actually want people who know about the lore or the IP to even watch their shows anymore. Why? Those people are a problem. It means you've got to put more work into your show. If you've got to keep track of all the lore and all the details and get them all right, then that's a major deal for you. Whereas if you can get people who don't really care and they'll just consume whatever you vomit out into their mouths, that'll be great for them. It means they don't need to put in any work. Believe me, no work went into this Halo TV show. And so we get articles like this from the company themselves, which are no longer caring about the actual facts or reality of the situation. Instead, it's simply making people like the PC gamer journalist happy. He enjoys the suggestion that you're not a real fan. Sorry. Because it doesn't matter what the truth is to them anymore. It simply matters if they get that burn in, if they make people perceive that they won or if they can make everybody else leave so they can quite happily engage with their army of people who don't care about the quality of what they watch. Oh, I'll give it a chance. I'll give it the entire series and make up my mind afterwards. Because that's 
all they care about in the end. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.